Robin. Robin Golden. How Just did call you me become Robin. interested in gerontology? Long story, I went to social work school um, here in Chicago at the University of Chicago and I went through school and there were no classes on aging or anything like that. I had my first job in a hospital as a clinical social worker and then my second job I went to work in a family service agency where I was doing psychotherapy with all ages and we had a system where people you know, chose their own clients to go see when they were building their caseload. And I was the only one there that took the older adult clients mm. because I found them absolutely fascinating, not just because of their wisdom, but their openness for change. And I learned a lot from them. I hope I helped influence their lives because um, it was a remarkable experience to see people who were frail and in their 80s who still wanted to, you know, make some significant things happen in their lives so I would take those cases and no one else people would look at me the other social workers and say what are you doing why are you so interested in these older adults and I think it was just a combination of factors their wisdom their openness etc that made me say this is a population I really wanted to spend my full time with so when I left there I went to work in an agency that was more in the aging network where I went in as a clinical supervisor and then kind of moved up the ranks and then ultimately um, ran a program with about 40 staff where we did some extremely innovative programs for hard to reach older adults, predominantly home visits, which are always so wonderful to get to know the person within the context of, of who they are because you see a very different person when you're sitting in a sterile office as opposed to their home. So that home visit aspect was very, very, very um, exciting to me as well. And all of that said, I just continued my career on in aging. I worked at that agency for 20 years and really that's when I got so involved and hooked with being uh, a gerontologist and a gerontological social worker. And that that's what's been my career and I think that specializing in gerontology kind of launched my career in a different way and many people said are you sure you want to specialize and leave working with all ages but there was something about the aging field and the people that I met in the field when I would come to a conference like the American Society on Aging and the mission of the people and the commitment to work with older adults and particularly hard to reach and vulnerable older adults was was infectious. Thank you. Oh, okay. Describe your career trajectory as a gerontologist. Mm -hmm. At what point in your career did you embrace gerontologist to describe yourself? Um, I feel as if I've embraced it at different times based on settings. So I'm in, when I'm in an academic setting, so when I'm at a gerontological society conference or when I'm with a university, um, uh, at a university speaking and talking about aging, I typically talk about being a gerontologist, but most of the time I talk about myself being a social worker in the field of aging. And part of why I don't use gerontologist as much had to do with just the, not so few people know what it means. And I think, um, I think we will be remiss if we continue to just view ourselves that way in the future population with boomers getting older and the numbers of us that are moving forward, I'm not sure the typical consumer will connect to the term gerontologist. So I think it's something we, it, as important as it is to hold on to the legacy and the incredible people who went before us in terms of their knowledge around gerontology. Um, I think I use that term uh, discreetly, but I always have felt like I've wanted, I've worked with um, older adults and wanted to work with older adults. I just don't know if I've labeled myself that way. Okay. Does that make sense, or is that? Yeah. Uh, 
Did you have female mentors who impacted your move into gerontology? Yes, yes. Jenny Chin Hansen is one of those. Do you know Jenny? I she do. she uh, ran Omlock in California. She was a former chair of ASA, so I got to know her here. And I was oh, I've always been so struck by her sensitivity and her willingness to consider helping people and helping them learn and understand the field. And I think her analytic skills are really what drew me to her um, in a way because she she is able to take the needs of a population and build services around them in a way that is innovative and unique. And she then is somebody who never takes full credit for anything. It's always about the people around her. So those two components in terms of her leadership skills as well as her creativity are something I've tried to learn from and embrace. She certainly has been um, a mentor for me. Um, other people who have been mentors are people like Lynn Feinberg who absolutely have stuck with an issue such as caregiving, made it their life, she's made it her life's work, and what a difference she has made both as a practitioner as well as a policymaker. And that's something that I really am enthused about constantly because the two go hand in glove. And in my career, I've tried to complement the clinical with the more administrative running programs, but also doing research to build evidence to the programs that I'm developing because I know that if we don't have the evidence, we can't influence the policy. So she's been a wonderful mentor in terms of that and uh, we have a great bond in that, in that way. Um, going back even further, I think about Rose Dobroff, who is a very strong, uh, still, still with us uh, in spirit. She was somebody I would come to these conferences and just want to sit at her feet because I, she had so much to offer, her wisdom about the field, the knowledge, and a social worker as well, so I connected with her around that. R prolific writer um, and uh, somebody who was just all, all embracing of the youngins around them. So those, those three people have been very significant, all different ages and all different characteristics. Neat. What is unique about being a woman gerontologist? Well, I think what's unique is most of the population that we see are women. And, you know, just by, you know, longevity issues, we have more women in the aged population than men. So there's something about the fact that we have a greater empathy and understanding for women as women ger gerontologists that I think is significant. I also think gerontology is a field that's all about collaboration, all about working together. It truly takes a village to serve older adults and their families and to create programs and to teach students about it. All of that together is about collaboration. And I think just being a woman, um, I'd like to think that sometimes we're better collaborators. Um, we have that skill set, that relational aspect of what we do too, how important it is to sit with and listen and understand what people are saying as opposed to talking at them or trying to, you know, run the show. I think women too have uh, a stronger sense of that. So I think that's what's been important about being a woman in gerontology. How has being a gerontologist interacted with your own personal aging process? <laughs> Very interesting. Um, I am constantly shocked when I'm in a room filled with gerontologists how many of us are not dealing with our own aging very well, which is interesting. I mean, the whole denial process, all of what it means, you know, you'd think we'd be embracing it more. Um, yet, I think for me, I feel like at least intellectually, I'll know what I might experience or what a family member might go through. I think emotionally, 
it may be harder because the intellectual may weigh out over the emotional, which is problematic because you want to experience and feel some of the losses and changes that is, are associated with aging and want to also you know, hone those skills of mastery to deal with those changes and losses. So I hope I'll be able to move out of the intellectual and into the emotional realm as easily as people do who age well. And um, I hope for that, but it's still a little ways off and I'll see what happens. I feel like I understand the issues and the dynamic that might happen, but I wanna be attentive to it. And I feel as if we women in gerontology don't sit around and talk about this issue enough either, which is in itself very interesting. You know, we kid about it, we, you know, we joke about it, um, but do we really get, go more deeply around it, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Or do you think it's that we're more likely to talk to other women who are not gerontologists? Of course, about? of course. But I do think it's important for us to talk to other people who are in similar circumstances because of what I just described, that we may miss com certain components because we think we know what we're supposed to be expecting and we know the score, but the reality is we still have to go through it and feel it. On, on the emotional level. Okay. The Wiggle Project focuses on the legacies of older women gerontologists. Within that framework, is there anything else you would like us to know? How important it is that you're doing this and to show the legacy of to the future gerontologists of America and beyond. And I I hope that it's not a profession that's shrinking or a field that's shrinking. And I think that this would be a wonderful thing for younger women to experience and see because the whole notion of mentorship, I think, has changed in our society that's more um, social media focused. Not that I want to bash that or say that I'm definitely not digitally as um, up to par as I should be but there still needs to be that time to get to know one another on a relational context and in person seeing one another. And I'm not sure that it's happening enough. And so if the Wiggle Project could make some of that happen by younger people at least seeing us talk about the importance of gerontology and these issues and this incredible field that we've gotten, gotten ourselves into, I think it will help encourage them because we really do continue to have a workforce issue. We don't have enough people going into aging to meet the demand in any aspect of our disciplines. And um, that shortfall is going to hit us when the numbers keep rising and people are not going to get the services they need, the care they need. Students aren't going to be trained to understand the differences with older adults and the dynamics associated with aging. And I think that will be unfortunate in terms of a lot of mental health as well as physical health um, outcomes as a result. I agree. And I think that, you know, even seeing this as being recorded will be beneficial for other students or, you know, younger students. Because, Absolutely. You know, I didn't see anybody like that when I was an undergraduate. There was nothing there to say, you know, here are women who are in the field. You know, the only thing I saw were books, you know, and just reading what everybody did or um, reading their research. So Which can be just as significant. It is. It's very significant. There, but there's definitely a difference from you know, reading something that somebody wrote and then actually being able to see them at a conference and say, So, oh. so one of my mentors that I forgot to talk about was Bonnie Genevay, who passed away a few years ago, an unbelievable woman from uh, Washington, Seattle, Washington. And she, I really got to know her at this meeting and learned so much from her clinically as working with my clients that you know, I read about her and what it meant to meet her face to face and get to know her was, was remarkable. So you're absolutely right. The fact that you only have read people, I mean, that's why I give you a lot of credit for being in a meeting like this because you can put faces with the readings. I was just, I did a session with someone this morning and Wendy Lusbader, who's another person who you might want to think about interviewing, 
um, from Seattle. Again, there's a hotbed of incredible gerontologists in Seattle, by the way, women. And they all get together regularly. Yeah, I think and Margaret Neal. Yes, well, yeah. well she's in Oregon, yeah. so. Yeah. But uh, she's, she's an incredible person too. But the people in Seattle, so Wendy, so, so Wendy was at the meeting this morning, the session that I was presenting at, my co-presenter, when Wendy asked a question and said what her name was, my co-presenter almost fell over and said, I have read your, every one of your books and I quote you, this is a woman who was presenting who's 65 years old herself, if not older, and she said, I cannot believe you're in the room and you just heard me present. Mm -hmm. And what that means that I'm meeting you right now is, is just a tremendous thing. And to see that happen, she was almost in tears because again, what, what it means to meet someone whose work you, you know, whose works you've read and embraced is, is an unbelievably awesome experience. Mm -hmm.